He says, nevertheless, I have this against you. Notice what it says. You have left your first love. You have left your first love. You have left, and the word left means to forsake. You have forsaken your first love. I love what with the Greek grammarist Kenneth Weiss writes about this particular verse. He says, but I have this against you. Your love for me, that earliest love, you abandoned. You abandoned. Notice it doesn't say you lost your first love. It says left. But how does a believer leave his first love? How do you believe your first love? You remember, look, let me tell you something. When you get saved, you know what the trick of the enemy is? Making people think they're more mature than what they are. That's the trick of the enemy. Making you think you're more mature than what you are spiritually. That's the trick of the enemy. And everybody wants to give the impression that they're way more mature than what they really are. Years don't make you mature in Christianity. People get that all mixed up. <laughs> Years don't make you mature. It's communion that grows you. It's your communion with the Lord. You could be saved for 30, 40, 50, whatever, how many years. It's that communion. And the person that holds dear to the things they first received when they got saved, when they remember how messed up they were, how their life was a wreck, and how when they got saved, they was reading the Bible every day. You know, when you get saved, you got your Bible out, you got an ink pen, you take notes, then you get settled in all of a sudden, oh man, I didn't heard that before, I don't need this. You know, you start thinking that you arrived to a place where you have not arrived. He who begun a good work will complete it, and even until the day of Christ. We are all just beginners in light of eternity. He said, well, how in the world could somebody leave the... What do you mean he left your first love? Well, by loving something more than Jesus Christ. And you think, well, what do you mean loving something more than Jesus Christ? You're talking about like some other thing outside of the church. No, I'm talking about in the church. Loving a title more than Jesus Christ. Loving a position more than Jesus Christ. Loving where your role is more than Jesus Christ. Loving where you think you need to be more than Jesus Christ. All those things that nobody see but Christ. And you can get, you know, overwhelmed with those things and perseverate on those things. And over and over again, you'll think, and you'll think over and over again, well, I should be here by now. And I should be doing this and I should be doing that. And, and that affect your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because how we think we should be. And it start becoming other stuff. Or oh, you can start working. I'm, I'm working for the Lord. Which I'm serving the Lord, man. I'm down there shoveling and we're doing outreaches and we putting up tents. I'm working. Man, I'm working. You reading your Bible? No, we got another outreach schedule. That's good. Yeah. And, and you can just do the work and do the work. We're serving people getting saved and everything. And the Lord said, But you know what? You're not really in communion with me no more. It looks good outside. People said, man, it good. The church down in Ephesus, you better go down there. It's a huge church. You know God is doing something down there. The Lord said, really? <laughs> really? Nevertheless, though, I got something against this church. What do you mean you got something against this church? This is a good church. This is a church where everybody in town talking about. They on, you know, Facebook Live. They on YouTube. They got thousands and thousands of people coming. They got ministries going on. They got all these things. And man, this is a working church. Oh, Lord, this is a working church. Hallelujah. I love that because we love the crowds and all. Man, you know God is doing something. And look at this and look at that. And you know what the Lord said? Nevertheless. You said, what? This church? Yeah, nevertheless. I got something. He's like, I got something against you. And this is italics. He's really saying, nevertheless, I have against you. I have against you that you left your first love. That, that they could, you know, though they could bear all, they couldn't have bear the evil apostles and they couldn't bear false teaching. So how could they leave their first love? Because a part of what they did, he wasn't the reason why they did it. What they did, he wasn't the reason why they did it. They did it because they wanted glory from man or some other stuff. 
or they wanted to be accepted by people or looked a certain way or, 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 or they wanted to, you know, let me tell you something. If you're a Christian, say amen. amen. Let me tell you something. The worst thing you could ever try to do, the worst thing you could ever try to do is try to impress people. That's the worst thing you could ever do. It creates a deformed bondage. That's the worst thing you ever can do. Because you're going to stand before the Lord one day. Each one of us will give account of ourselves unto the Lord. It's the worst thing to try to impress people. And many of us in the church can fall into this trap. You can serve the Lord in misery, in toil, in labor, and you can serve the Lord, or you can serve him with a love and joyous attitude and so forth. You know, you know people, I'm tired of ushering every week. I'm tired of singing on the praise and worship team. I'm tired, I'm tired of you know, cleaning those bathrooms. I'm tired of setting up those chairs every week. I'm tired of doing this sound every week. I'm tired of this, I'm tired of that. And the list goes on. And that's when you know your communion is not right with God. Look, I get tired in it, but I'm not tired of it. Man, that guy never stops to seem like he's crazy. No, I'm not crazy. I love Jesus. I know. I remember where I came from. A dark, dirty, nasty sinner with no hope. And if the, the more you remember where you came from, that you was a filth, our righteousness is filthy rags. The more you realize that, the more you know you need communion with the Lord. You know, apart from him, we'd be doing everything we used to do. We need more people in communion with God than ever. You walked away from it. Uh, you left your first love. God said, come on back. Come on, come on back. Come on back. Remember when you used to have the flashlight with the Bible at night reading and studying and said, Lord, show me you, Lord. Show me how much you love me, Lord. Show me how much you care. Lord, I want to do it your way. Remember those days. When all you wanted was Jesus. When all you wanted was to please him. All you cared about was Lord. I only care about what you think. 